provide you. Well, good evening there. Hi, folks. This is your co-host, Peter Schrappen, with the Seattle Boat Show Live. This has uh, been such a fun endeavor for us the last, I will count the, the days or the, the editions we've done. Hey, there's Mark Wenzel. Hi, Mark. We've done about 17 hey, Peter. of these, I think. How's it going, my friend? What, what did you say? I think it's 17, right? I think that's right. Yeah, lucky 17. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah, Mark Wenzel, Wagoner Cruising Guide. The, I like this, Mark. I don't know if you like this metaphor, but I like to call you the Rick Steves of boating. Um, you seem to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on. You work your tail off like Rick does. You focus, your, you target I'm your energy. I'm flattered. I'm flattered like by that. that. Okay. And, and yeah. I, I, do, I do love what Rick Steves does and would aspire to be uh, like that. Uh, little known fact about Rick Steves, and I read a biography in uh, Seattle Times about him. He eats the same thing for lunch every day in Edmonds. Their office is in Edmonds. And I, it's, uh, I, I, it's either a burrito or something else. Orders the same thing every day. Now, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. Well, maybe if we would eat with Rick, we would be like Rick. Maybe it's yeah. one of those uh, causation or correlations. Maybe that's where we've been stumbling. Um, well, like Rick, he's got an incredible staff. And I, I have an incredible staff, but it's much smaller than Rick's. Leonard, Lorena, are you out there and going to join us? There, there they are. are. Leonard and Lorena Landon are managing editors for the Wagner Guide, and they are busy as anything preparing the uh, 2021 Wagner Guide. And uh, as it says, uh, finding everything that's fit to print uh, and all the changes. And uh, we're, we're going to, well, why don't we use that as a segue, uh, Leonard Lorena, and talk about uh, some of the new changes that have popped up. The, uh, well, adding pages again. So the book is growing a little bit more. And uh, we added a, this year, the big one is we're adding Southeast Alaska chapter. So it grows by that much. We're taking everybody further north. We used to take you as far as Ketchikan and uh, let you find your way north from there. But uh, the 2021 Wagoner Guide will take you up to Glacier Bay National Park and Skagway and Haines and all of the Southeast Alaska destinations. So that's a big one. And then also, uh, as, as usual, we're doing an annual theme. Last year, or the 2020 Wagoner Guide, I say last because we're already thinking 2021. Uh, caught myself several times doing that. And so the, this year's theme is food. And uh, next year's theme is titled Meeting the Challenge. So it has to do with anything that's uh, boating related where it involves a challenge of some sort. And the most classic, of course, are races, sailboat races, but also powerboat races, and also tribal uh, challenges of some sort. And uh, you'll find there's a variety of different topics in meeting the challenges next year's, uh, next year's theme. So we're working on that. Lorena's been doing a fantastic job putting all of that together. And uh, I've been going blurry eyed in front of the computer with uh, Adobe products, putting all of this stuff together. But it's gonna be a fantastic product this year. Excellent, yeah, as, as the publisher, I, I'm, I'm having to deal with uh, now 528 pages of the Wagner Guide is what it looks like we're going to be. So it's going to be a brick when it lands. Boom. <laughs> a little bit of a workout. So uh, what's been going on in the news, Mark? What have you been, uh, what have you been reading about? Well, uh, the big news, let me see if I can pull it up here. Here it is. Uh, over the weekend, there was quite a bit of excitement uh, uh, out in the San Juan Islands. So this shot was taken uh, off the west side, the lower west side of San Juan Island. And uh, we talked about uh, J35, Taliqua, and how she uh, lost her baby two years ago and uh, pushed that baby around for 17 days. And it kind of ripped at everybody's heart spring, heartstrings. And uh, she had a new baby this weekend. And this is J57. Uh, that's uh, him on the right, and uh, I have another shot in here, but he and his uh, younger sister with their mom, that's their mom in the foreground, were sw seen swimming around together and frolicking, and the other whales were, were uh, breaching and making audible sounds and, and uh, just a, a lot going on with the whales, and uh, very exciting. Now, that was uh, Saturday. And then by Sunday, the whales were gone. And the scientists are saying that they headed back out into the Pacific Ocean to do more feeding. Uh, but uh, very exciting. And there's four more uh, expecting 
uh, births uh, coming up. So uh, very exciting that, that we've got whales. And of course, this is a very sensitive period. Uh, 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 there are a lot of uh, deaths of, of baby whales uh, before they're born. And of course, this one made it. And uh, uh, that first year is so critical that they get enough feed to, to grow and to begin to uh, uh, be able to handle themselves in the wild. So this is very exciting. And uh, there's, a, there's a picture of it. So Excellent. Yeah, and we covered whale. We'll, we'll continue to cover whales as we go along with this series. But uh, we, I will put in the chat box the link to the previous episode of our Saddle Boat Show Live where we took a deep dive into um, whales. We had some experts on. And uh, yeah, that was an excellent topic for us. And we're going to be talking probably next week. Uh, Leonard, do you want to talk about the survey at all and kind of encourage people that, uh, to consider taking it? Yes, uh, this is the survey, uh, the whale survey, and uh, it's uh, put, um, i trying to remember, uh, well, let's see, um, uh, San Juan folks and uh, Be Whale Wise folks that put this survey out. I don't know exactly who put the surveys together, but uh, we got notice of this, and I did go online and, uh, and take, it's an online survey. Uh, it's not Survey Monkey, it's a, it's a different outfit from that, from that, but it's very easy to use. Uh, click on the link and uh, start the survey. It asks a number of questions of boaters about uh, your activities in the area on the west side of San Juan Island. It also asks some of the questions about the uh, about whales and about wildlife, marine wildlife, and how you value that, why you value it, uh, and trying to get a perspective. What what I gathered is they're trying they're trying to get a boater's perspective on the the wildlife and whales in specific, in in particular to uh, put together some programs and further the, the voluntary, possibly further the voluntary no-go zone that's off the west side of San Juan Island right now. So there were some, a number of questions about that. It took me about 10 minutes, I think, 10 or 12 minutes to do the survey, pretty easy to do. Uh, there are some optional questions if you don't want to put in uh, personal, not necessarily name information, but information about your boat and a few other things. But it's-, uh, where, it's where can people find that, Leonard? Um, it's it's going to be on a link off of uh, the Whalewise. Is that correct, Mark? Is that where that yeah. link is going to go? Okay. Yeah, and we'll have it uh, uh, on the Wagner Guide uh, uh, website, and uh, we'll make sure we have it for next week's show. Okay, uh, uh -huh. so that everybody can uh, consider taking that survey. It, and the reason that we're a little <laughs> unsure about where exactly, Peter, is that it, it's just coming together today. So we were just getting the email links on that and a preview of the whole thing right now. Oh, I now. see. So, yep. Yeah. And I'll put that, that's a fantastic website. So I will put that in the chat right now. Yeah. And of course, we're happy to help them. They're trying to come up with responsible policies and so forth, uh, and how recreational uh, boats can mix with the whales. You know, it's a little bit concerning when we talk about new baby whales uh, uh, and so forth, that everybody's going to jump in their boat and run out to go find them. And uh, uh, the one notification is that uh, uh, the mothers and the babies are very sensitive during this period. And you definitely want to maintain that distance. And uh, if not a little further. Well, yeah, and I always have been drinking the Kool-Aid. All these issues seem to have a government affairs overlay with them. If we're not at the table, one only knows the, the, sale, the skies and scope of these regulations where we could be totally shut out of boating in the San Juan. So it's been so helpful for us to be part of the negotiating process to make sure we've got some common sense uh, new rules for us that we can be supportive of. And it really speaks to you know, we like, to say, we like to say, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So um, how can we uh, continue to be at the table? How can boaters continue to do the right thing? And how can we engage with our lawmakers? It's something, as you know, Mark, <laughs> I've yeah, built my career on. So uh, yeah, I've definitely been watching this one from many different perspectives. What else is in the news, Mark? Well, uh, we've, uh, let's talk about the last week. Uh, the holiday weekend was in pretty incredible. And what I'd like to point out, and Leonard Lorena were out there with grandchildren having a great time recreating. And uh, uh, I wasn't out on the water this weekend, but I was carefully watching the water. And those that were out had a little bit of a surprise. Uh, it was gorgeous, sunny days. And then uh, I think it was Saturday night, the winds picked up. And I was watching people coming back on Sunday and Monday 
and they were getting quite a bouncy ride. So I'm going to blend this into our discussion on tonight's topic on weather, because I think it caught a number of people. And Leonard and Lorena, you heard a number of things on the radio with people in trouble, didn't you? We did. Uh, we heard some kayakers had overturned, two people were in the water, a um, pilot boat stopped and picked them up. He couldn't deliver them back to the rest of the group until that evening because he had a job to go pick up the ship. And we heard a sailboat had turned over, capsized. So, yes, it was surprising. Yeah. And it was, it was uh, two occurrence. We were out uh, Friday night up in Susha in Echo Bay, and uh, the forecast was for, them, uh, for some southerly winds. And uh, unexpectedly, for at least for us, they, they were easily, they were out of the southeast. And uh, if you know Echo Bay, it's not, the, it's not the most pleasant place to be on southeast. And there were a whole, there were, well, there were, I counted the boats, and there were 80 boats in there. And we were all rocking around that night. It was, it was the most uncomfortable night that I've had in quite a while. But uh, uh, that was a surprise, too. The intensity of the wind and also the southeast direction on it was a little bit of a surprise especially in that microclimate area of Susha Bay. And then, of course, the, the wind that you talked about picked up uh, it actually, uh, Sunday night, and then it went into Monday, the holiday day, and that's the one that really caught people off guard. Hmm. Well, I was I think this is a, a signal to all of us that uh, this is now fall, shoulder season boating, and we're going to talk about that. And Leonard and Lorena, you started calling around to some of the marinas to see what, uh, what's going on out there. What did you find out? We're interested in what's going on for a shoulder season and what uh, marinas are doing in preparation. Some marinas are seeing more activity for uh, September than they've seen in the past. And you have some notes on that too. Yeah, we, uh, this is kind of a general. And then uh, Lorena's, uh, as usual, Lorena's done the specifics, the detail oriented stuff. <laughs> uh, and uh, so the, the kind of the overarching things that we discovered, uh, one of them is that the, uh, that's expected to be busier than usual. Uh, I think a number of, we, we've already had some emails come into uh, Wagoner Guide from boaters that said, declared that they usually go boating in August and this year they're gonna go out in September or October uh, just to avoid some of the crowds. So there's gonna be some more people out there that are cruising the shoulder seasons than usual. And uh, the one thing to be prepared for if you're out there in the, in the shoulder season is you're going to have reduced staff. So the summer staff that was out there to take your lines and uh, to quickly take your reservation and a few other things, they're gone. And uh, they're, they're off back at school or whatever they're doing. And so you're going to have smaller reduced staff. So be patient with that when you come in. And they're, uh, one, a good news is they're going to be, re uh, not, not necessarily right now, but in a few weeks, you'll get reduced rates for winter rates. Uh, many of these kick in in October for many of the marinas, so you'll have a, a more uh, cost-effective stay at many of the marinas. Uh, the, the other one to be aware of is many of these are a number of the marinas that have dedicated uh, guest moorage. They traditionally and routinely will uh, winter uh, monthly lease that space, much of the guest space, out to people that are going to spend the winter, and that starts usually in October and runs until May or June. And so a number of marinas are indeed going to be doing that. So there's a slight reduction in the number of guest spaces that are out there. So you might discover that, that uh, there are some monthly moorage people in there, especially starting in October. September, you're probably still, you're not going to see very much of that, but certainly by October. And then as Mark pointed out, the weather is a big one. Make sure you keep an eye on the weather because it, it can change very quickly. Uh, the other one is uh, the, at the marine parks, shoulder season, it's fantastic. Uh, even with the slight increase in the number of people, you'll probably find plenty of space available, buoys available, and lots of anchorage available. One of the, one, one of the things uh, that we did discover, this was interesting when we were out this past weekend, Labor Day weekend, and it's a statement about the, uh, it's my, I'm smiling because it's, it's boaters. They're very special people and uh, thoughtful people. We were at Susha, and at Susha, where there's plenty of room for everybody to to maintain their six feet of distance, uh, we saw very few masks. There were a number of people that were prepared, but most people were not wearing a mask. There were probably at most 10% of the people that have masks on, you know, on Susha Island, on, uh, on the island, on the trails and so on. We went over to Stewart Island, which of course there's a resident population there. People live there that, uh, that uh, year round. 
And on, uh, on Stewart Island, going out to the lighthouse and back uh, easily, 90 to, 80 to 90 percent of the people had masks on. Uh, there was no enforcement of that. There was no signs. It was just boaters being aware that this is a population that's uh, out here in, uh, in a remote area. And uh, it, was, it was great to see that. Uh, we had a great time out there. We found Anchorage uh, in Prevost. And the other statement about the weekend, I guess, was that we found space, anchored space. We found uh, marina space. We pulled into Rosario Resort uh, at uh, about uh, five o'clock on Sunday and uh, had no reservations. Uh, VHF radioed in and they put us on the breakwater. Um, it was on the outside, but that was not a problem. So there's space, even though it's busy out there. But we had a great weekend with that. So getting to some specifics, we'll start with the South Sound to let folks know Arabella's Landing and Gig Harbor, they were planning to open on October 1st, their guest moorage, their mainly uh, permanent moorage. They've decided not to open guest moorage on October 1st. They're looking at a later date, so we'll keep you posted on that. Poles Bowl Marina, they're fully open 100%. Bathroom, showers, laundry is open. Reservations are accepted. Chilshul Bay Marina, their new bathroom, showers, and laundry buildings, brand new, will be opening sometime this month in September. And uh, the permits to start construction on Duke's uh, restaurant are still pending at this time. They're hopeful that will come about soon. Kingston, uh, the pump out at Kingston has been repaired and is operational. Uh, the mortgage rates are slightly less on the shoulder season. Point Hudson uh, Marina, guest moorage is through September and permanent moorage begins October 1st. Uh, guest moorage will be available uh, you know, as space allows. Their nearby cafes are open for outdoor seating and takeout. And La Conner, uh, the office is open Monday through Friday. So on weekends, voters should use the self-registration kiosk and they noted that they're seeing more activity than usual now that uh, moving into September. They say that people are taking advantage of the shoulder season. Bathrooms and restrooms there are open, uh, showers open. Cap Sandy Marina is very busy. Uh, they say they've matched their guest moorage from 2019. Uh, even when they started out slow, they've matched their their guest moorage and they've been very busy. Yeah, with the number of with the number of stays. So they've been very busy this year. They uh, will be replacing a dock starting November 1st. Their office is closed. You contact them by radio or phone for uh, reservations. Rosario Resort, the outdoor Cascade Grill will be closing Monday, September 14th and the dining room in the mansion will be opening Wednesday, September 16th. The that's fantastic that they're uh, opening that yeah. now. That's where we should be having our burritos, Mark. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That, that's another one of those general statements about the, uh, the shoulder season that we're discovering there are, that things will be opening up that were previously closed. So. The swimming pools remain closed, however, in the spa. Their off-season rates start September 20th, so keep that in mind. It's a savings of about a dollar a foot. Roche Harbor Marina, their restaurants also open 50% capacity. The swimming pool remains closed. Their off-season rates start September 28th. Uh, not accepting reservations, contact them on the radio channel 78 Alpha. Friday Harbor, the, uh, operating also 50% capacity for guest moorage. And keep in mind that uh, it may appear that some of these marinas are full because of the permanent moorage, but the 50% capacity uh, applies to guest moorage. Uh, that will continue for September and October until they move into the next phase. And also keep in mind that uh, Friday Harbor, that a portion of their docks are held uh, for first come, first serve. Reservations are available until September 14th. And Deer Harbor, reservations are accepted online only through Dock Walk. They're operating at 50% capacity for guest moorage. 
And the Island Pie, great pizza next door is available for takeout. Very good. Very excellent. Uh, the pool is closed. And the Deer Harbor Inn up the road is, the restaurant is now called Matthew's Smokehouse and they offer dinners. And uh, in the summers, they also serve breakfast. We've got a question. And I, I assume was gonna... a lot of barbecue. Yes, a lot of yeah. barbecue open Friday through Tuesday. And that's quite a change from what uh, Deer Harbor Inn used to be. So it's, it's one of those very dramatic changes. And then moving on to BC, Victoria International Marina. They were offering moorage for boats uh, 40 feet and above during COVID. And now they're back to offering, it's for 65 feet and above. And that's due to Transport Canada rules. So again, their moorage is for the larger yachts. They're still planning to have their Pacific Yacht Forum in June of 2021, and the focus is on uh, brands for these large yachts. And their services include itinerary planning and rendezvous packages, uh, first class uh, offerings there at Victoria International. And then Leonard, you had some others for BC? Just uh, Victoria, again in Victoria, the Victoria Harbor Authority, Greater Victoria Harbor Authority, uh, their winter moorage program starts October 1st. And so that's a uh, rates adjustment. And also that uh, what I mentioned earlier about uh, they'll, they'll, be have, they'll be leasing out some of the guest moorage on a monthly basis, so reduced a little bit. So there might be some limited space or, or some small limited, limited amount of space there. Uh, they, all of the amenities are open. The office is not, not open. Their uh, reservations are all online through Swift Harbor. And uh, all of the other camp events have been canceled. Uh, the, here's the best deal going if you're in BC and you're a BC boater. Port of Sydney is offering a, a fall uh, a special right now. It's $35 a night. Doesn't matter how big or small your boat is. It's a straight $35 a night for two nights. And then after that, you pay for one night at $1.25 per foot. And then you can restart the whole program over again. It's oh. got to be the best deal going right now. Yeah, back in the day, I don't know if it's still the case, but Sydney was famous for their bookstores. Is that still the case? Yeah, they, they have one less bookstore than they did back then, but they used to call themselves Booktown. And there are a number of bookstores. Uh, Tanner's is the one I frequent the most. And, uh, uh, but there's a number of other ones, and you're absolutely right, Peter, as well as great restaurants and pubs. Exactly. So at Port Sydney and, Marina. And Nanaimo bars. And Nanaimo <laughs> bars at the bakery. You've been there. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> I know my way around a Nanaimo bar. <laughs> <laughs> so at Port Sydney, they're also offering a trifecta. They have a, a, a cont not contest, a drawing going right now. And it runs until through the end of the month, through the end of September. And if you stay at three of their five uh, Mill Bay Group marinas, you're entered to win $1,000 worth of moorage. Uh, so again, a great deal, and you get entered into a contest to win some moorage over there. They were commenting that uh, guest, moorage, the guest moorage is available. They were commenting that they, uh, they normally do not have any monthly moorage during the summer, but they did keep that going because they had a, quite a number of, of what they called stranded boats. Uh, so US and other nationalities, boats that were stranded in their marina, and they're still there right now. Uh, the next one is Pages Resort, and they've been very busy, apparently. They're fully open, uh, including their cottages and the tent and RV sites. They're all very busy at this time. Fuel Dock is open, uh, and the Sunday uh, Farmer's Market is going uh, on the lawn in front of the inn uh, with live music, too. So another great destination. And that's up in Silva Bay. Yeah, apparently they had 25 vendors for the market, so it was wow. quite active, yes. Uh, Poets Cove and Bedwell Harbor, their swimming pool is open, actually, one of the few pools that are, is open. Uh, the spa is closed. The bistro is open. However, the fine dining venue is closed. Uh, the convenience store is open, and of course, accommodations and moorage are open. Their winter rates start October 1st. And then Port Browning Marina, their moorage uh, rates actually remain the same throughout the year. Uh, they're pretty consistent with their rates. The restrooms are open. The pool remains closed. And they're closing their camping sites 
uh, starting September 27th. Salt Spring Marina, another popular spot. Uh, Guest Moorage has uh, opened, it's been open. Uh, they uh, check to make sure everyone's healthy. Their off season rates uh, take effect October 15th. And that's and a the, brand new marina, completely yeah, rebuilt. New, beautiful. And their office is open for payments. They have deckhands available that come down and help you with your, your lines. They wear masks. And they uh, tell me they're awaiting their portable pump out. Apparently, that's being repaired and will arrive soon. Yeah, Lady Smith uh, Community Mar Marina, Lady Smith. Uh, their uh, when we talked to them, their answer was one of those that you would normally. Uh, the answer was one of those where you would normally kind of go, "Well, gee, that's not very exciting." But in today's COVID days, their answer was business as usual, and that's good to hear uh, anytime, especially right now. So they're business as usual right now. They're, uh, they're actually hosting several rendezvous. Their washrooms and showers are open limited hours with, by directive, apparently, they're nine to five, which is kind of the office hours as well. We had a question. I was going to jump in real quick. We had a question uh, actually from my mom before she hits the sack and saying, Listen, what is shoulder season? And I guess I would define shoulder season as the kind of the Goldilocks of boating where it's not too crazy busy and it's not too dead, but it's just kind of in that sweet spot of right in the middle of busy and slow. Would, would you agree with that ass assertion? Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. it's that great period uh, before the, the winter kicks in where you can have beautiful fall cruising. Uh, it's also used in the springtime, again, between winter and uh, spring cruising. So both are great times to go boating. And that's really what sets us apart too in, in the Northwest. And I know I'm preaching the choir here, but other states, you're gonna have to pull your boat in the winter, like Michigan, you can't, bo you can't go boating year round out here in the Pacific Northwest. It's, uh, we like to say 24 seven, 365, it doesn't matter, rain or shine. Um, it's always uh, great opportunities to hit the, hit the water and uh, visit your favorite marina. We've had, we've had some outstanding um, cruising days in October, or early October. At the end of October, it gets a little chancy. But early October, you can get some of these days where it's, uh, it's sunny in the day, it's crisp at night, and uh, wake up in the morning, it's clear and still, absolutely still quiet. Water is dead calm, and it's wonderful. And there are very few other boats out there at the same time, so it's a great time to go cruising. We had, um, the other thing I was gonna mention, the uh, Nanaimo, <coughs> uh, Nanaimo, Port of Nanaimo, it's open, uh, they say open for BC boaters, of course, and the amenities, everything else, is, everything is open. Their winter moorage starts in October, same kind of thing, winter, winter moorage rates, and also they're gonna start filling some of their, trans, their guest area with uh, monthly moorage people. Union Steamship uh, Reservation, they've been very, very busy, they say. And uh, that's probably their proximity to downtown Vancouver, but they've been extremely busy. And he, they're taking reservations, they're expecting to have a busy season, and uh, winter rates start for them on October 15th. Restaurants are open for dine-in and take-out, uh, and they say the restaurants, not only the restaurants at the marina, but also uh, up away from the marina as well. I want to put a plug-in for that hike around Bowen Island, uh, it's steamship, it's fantastic. I can put it in the chat box. If you're gonna be moored there and you want some exercise, it's not that far away from the marina. It's fantastic with the old growth and the ferns and yeah, it's splendid. It's a fun destination and uh, new for this year, they have a distillery right next to the Union Steamship. Uh, I haven't visited yet. Uh, unfortunately, I got cut off uh, with COVID-19 this year, but uh, uh, we'll have a report on that next season. And just you it's can't beat the location. Off. Can't beat the yeah. Other you say you got cut off from the <laughs> yeah. distillery. Uh, yeah, you can't beat the location uh, next to Vancouver. It's probably a you know forty minute cruise uh, going nine knots. It seems yeah. Yeah. We have a couple more places: John Henry's and uh, Pinder Harbor. Uh, their guest marriage remains open, and their store winter hours, ten a.m. to six p.m. That starts October first. Their cafe closes September 13th until Easter, after which they open again. And there's always food available, however, in their store. Madeira Park, the public wharf, their guest marriage remains open and the office is open. 
Uh, the washrooms have just closed for the season, and they say that the boat traffic has dropped off significantly as they started into September. Uh, Lund, small craft harbor, uh, their moorage is open. The office window is open to take your payment during business hours, eight to five. Uh, call ahead for moorage on channel 73. They do not take reservations and no rafting. Their showers and restrooms are open. So uh, those are some of the places to keep in mind for shoulder cruising. You know, yeah. we're always getting the question, when is the BC border going to open? Hey, Mark. Yeah. When's the BC border going to open? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Peter. Oh, I, uh, okay. I, uh, okay. Now, Here. what we did hear is that uh, the deadline had been uh, not a deadline, but the day they were going to announce the, the, the opening was set for September 21st. I've heard that they've now extended that another 10 days. So that takes it to the end of September. And we don't know whether we're just getting teased that at the end of September, the BC border might open. It's going to be like the starting line to an auto race, I think, with uh, U.S. boaters who are just dying to dip their toe into Canada and uh, get their Canada fix from not being able to go there all, all summer. And I may be right up there with them. I don't know, we'll see. So uh, keep, keep tuned, we'll keep reporting on it. We don't have anything new to tell you there. So. Yeah, I got close up to the border this past, uh, past Labor Day weekend. I did some camping in the Mount Baker area. I was able to visit uh, a couple of bakeries up there uh, on the terrestrial side, the land lover side of things. But uh, yeah, that, have you been to Linden, Mark? Have you been yeah, 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 yeah. That was fantastic. With the Dutch community there and the flowers and the absolutely. I had a. I didn't. I, I always had just buzzed right through there. Uh, well, and Blaine is, is a fantastic destination on the water with a lot of restaurants, and those restaurants need our help right now. They they normally survive based on the dry uh, auto traffic coming over the border from Canada on their way back into the states, and they're missing that. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised at all the, the uh, uh, marina, excuse me, the restaurants that you could go to from the Blaine Marina. Yeah. Uh, fun destination. Well, let's talk weather, Mark. Okay, before we talk weather, I have one other thing. I'd like to acknowledge again our sponsor for tonight, the Grosbeck uh, uh, Realty Group. And uh, last week I teased with with one of their listings, and I'll tease with another one. And uh, uh, they specialize in waterfront properties, Jean Grosbeck and her crew, and uh, uh, give them a call. And uh, this particular location, probably a lot of people have seen this. This is in Skyline. It's a second floor unit overlooking the marina. And wouldn't that be great to have a unit like that and uh, be able to look across the marina and maybe even have your boat in that empty slip right there that you could walk down, do work on it, or get ready to go. And uh, the nice thing, this is a three bedroom unit and uh, its pricing is more within the attainable range. I, I showed uh, a, a unit last week that was beautiful and had its own dock, but uh, was uh, $1.4 million, a little more than I my uh, pay level, but this one is about $550,000. And uh, there are some people who are looking at their piggy bank and saying, hmm, island living near the boat, closest place I could live to the San Juan Islands by boat and still drive. And, uh, and that's Skyline, just a beautiful little waterfront community in Anacortes. And uh, we thank the Grossbeck Group for uh, providing some sponsorship so we can uh, give you some great information. So well, that's a good point, Mark. You know, what I'm reading about is the fact that the Lake Tahoe's of the world, the Chelan's of the world are just exploding with new population. I would imagine Anacortes looks very attractive to the people uh, living in Seattle that get away from uh, urban living, a quiet, a quieter uh, pace and can still work in Seattle given how remote everything is. So, uh, you know, having to Absolutely. live in the same city is no and, longer. Uh, Leonard Lorena and myself, we, we, our home port is Anacortes and we, you know, when we have to, we jump in the car. It's a 90 minute drive into Seattle and uh, it makes it work and, and uh, it's a good, good balance. And uh, I can't say enough about the community. Excellent. All right, let's talk about weather. 
Yeah, let's and get to uh, it. I'm going to share my screen again and go over to our uh, weather map. You know, uh, this is very timely because, as Leonard mentioned, uh, this is the time of year that uh, that things start to shift, and uh, the weather. Uh, thanks to Peter's mother, Ginny, uh, it's the uh, shoulder season. And here, let me get that screen. I guess I need to stop that one and we'll get another one going. And uh, 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 we take the weather very seriously at the Wagner Guide. We've got a whole section in the beginning of the Wagner Guide that explains, all right, my, uh, my screen's going to uh, give me a challenge here. We'll, we'll get it working. Um, and part of, uh, this requires is weather planning. And last weekend was probably uh, the best example of this where a lot of people were caught. Uh, and, and the catch was we get these beautiful sunny days when a, uh, oh, my screen's not gonna, not gonna cooperate. Let me try one more time. Uh, and you know we're looking at, at uh, high pressure coming in and a high pressure settling in and that's what gives us these sunny days. And if I can pull this darn weather map up, I was gonna show you uh, all the high pressure we have around us and uh, 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 which like last weekend can just make for some beautiful conditions, but uh, uh, you gotta be prepared like we saw where, where it could shift. So what I'm sh trying to show you is the NOAA Ocean Prediction Center. And uh, what I do when I'm doing my weather planning is I go to the Ocean Prediction Center and I look at, oh, this does not want to, uh, let me try to force it here. And maybe that will work. Uh, where, Peter, is my weather map coming through now? It, it is, Mark. It's just a little bit smaller, but I think it's legible. It's readable. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll try one more time with this and we'll, we'll uh, get this. So uh, what I like to do is, is to assemble my weather information. And we have a, a checklist that's free on the Wagner Guide website. It's under the tab eBooks. And there's a whole group of eBooks that you can buy. Skip by that. The free stuff is further down the list and the weather checklist is right there. And this is something that we've perfected uh, where we uh, are able to use this checklist to gather all the information that we need on uh, what's happening within, with the weather and, and uh, pull it all together so we can see uh, a picture of uh, what's going on. Okay. Um, now, uh, you can then fill in the checklist with this information. And the whole idea there is, is determining whether you have a, a go or no go situation. And that's the way I look at it. I, I don't assume I'm going until I've pulled all that information together and I, I pretty much know what the situation looks like. And uh, so you can use uh, Ocean Prediction Center to see the weather maps. Let me try this one here and see if that'll do it. There we go. And uh, you get a map like this. This is the current weather. Peter, is that showing now? Uh, I think some, I'm seeing a nice map, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Let me, let me blow up the area where we are. And uh, this is an excellent weather map because uh, uh, look at all those H's. And I like to simplify it and say H's are good and L's are bad. And I'll show you some L's in a little bit, but L's are for low pressure and low pressure typically has uh, uh, some conditions and you can see some right over here. You can see some here. And what we're looking at here, I'll blow it up a little bit further, is to get right over in here where we can look at uh, 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 the conditions, and it's always easy to pick out Vancouver Island. And then what you're seeing with all this black in here is uh, a number of ships uh, that are reporting weather. Normally they report it at sea, like this ship out here, which is offshore, and they have these wind arrows. And I'll teach you just a little bit of how to uh, read that wind arrow. So you can see this wind arrow in the center, 
and you see the arrow showing the direction of the wind, and then you see what we call feathers on the back end of the arrow. A big feather is 10 miles an hour, and the small is five. You can add them together, and that ship at sea right there reported 15 knots of wind. Now, that's offshore. It looks uh, eyeballing. It looks like about 100 to 120 miles offshore. And, you know, why would I care about that? Well, the weather moves from the west to the east, and the weather that this ship is experiencing out here and out here will be our weather probably tomorrow morning. But uh, I'll take uh, a day with 15 knots, but you also see these other numbers. So around this high, you see 1024 millibars. Uh, that's high pressure, that's good. Now, where you look at the lows, you start to see this low here, the big red L, and you see 1011. And 1011 starts to get down into the area where you'll have some very unsettled weather. So I could look at this and say, you know, I think it's gonna be pretty nice tomorrow. And I can start the plan that tomorrow is gonna be a pretty nice day. So my, if I was going out on a cruise tomorrow, it would be a, this is a go. Uh, and then we have other tools that we can look at to actually see the different weather conditions. Now, what I like to do is to start writing all this down on the checklist. And then I look at the whole picture. Before I even look at this weather map, I grab my tide and current guide and I look at that first. Now, next week's show, Kevin Monahan from Ports and Passes is going to talk to us about some handy tips to how to use Ports and Passes or other tide and current guides to figure out when you have good conditions. And uh, the reason I look at the tide and current guide is because I'm watching to see which way is the wind blowing and which way is the current going. So if I looked right now, my current guide would tell me for Rosario Strait, uh, it would, my area here from Anacortes, uh, the current is slack at 6.30 tonight, and it's now uh, a, a turning to a flood, and that means the water is coming in through the Strait of Juan de Fuca, bending around and coming up through the islands. Now, uh, the wind is, as you can see, out of the west, out of the southwest, and so I do, I do not have a wind against waves situation. When I look at the current guide, I also can see that the maximum current in Rosario Strait is going to be 0.2 knots. And why is that? Well, right next to that is a little symbol that's black and white. It's a circle indicating the moon, and it's black on one side, white on the other. So it means the moon's at half stage. If you have an open dot, white or completely black, it's a full moon or a new moon. And a full moon or new moon is when you have your maximum tide and current. So that's, that's when you wanna be concerned that your current is gonna be at its maximum. Your tides are also potentially, at, when you have after an ebb, at their lowest. So if you're in a place like I was two weeks ago, shallow bay. I was in the back of shallow bay and I, I watched because I was in eight feet of water and I was okay. I, my boat draws three feet, but there was some, there was a large boat that came in after me and I looked at him and he was drawing probably about six feet and I thought, oh, he might be thumping in the middle of the night. So you want to look at, as part of looking at your entire weather picture, what your tides and current are going to be for that day and Kevin will bring that up and the main thing is wind against wave. You want to avoid that as much as you can because that's when you get your rougher conditions and uh, we can all tell stories about when we didn't pay attention to that and then all of a sudden, whoa, what happened? And that'll get us, oh, that's the segue to our show in two weeks where we're going to talk you. about- Look at you, the segue machine tonight. Yeah, how's that? <laughs> Uh, where we'll talk about seasickness if you don't call it right. But anyway, I then go to the Ocean Prediction Center map and I look for these highs or, or I watch to see if I have any, any lows out there. And if I have lows, and uh, typically what you'll see is you'll see, uh, here's a front that's going to come through the area so I can see I'm gonna have some change in the weather. 
Here's a low out here. Now with the predominant uh, west to east winds, that low is gonna come on shore uh, in Oregon, uh, probably eyeballing it in, in two days. And so I'd be watching if I was worried about the offshore conditions there with uh, these lows coming on shore. But up in our area, we've got some high pressure and it's gonna continue to be right, really nice. Now, some of you are sitting there and going, oh, well, what about windy? Let's see if I can pull windy up here. And uh, windy is an app as well as a website that uh, uh, is based on the weather models and it actually puts them into motion. I'll let this come up here. Here it is. And I'll share my screen. Can I try to share my screen? I assume it's not showing yet. Correct. All right, let me. And what Windy does that is so cool is it puts all of this in motion. And it has little animated arrows uh, hard to see probably on your screen, uh, but these oh, arrows in Strait of Juan de Fuca are, are moving. And you can see how the wind is coming in the straits. Look at how it's bending over here. Let's see if I can move this over a little bit. Nope. And uh, where it comes up out of the south and then turns, it comes right in the strait. Now, we talked about wind against wave, and this is where you'd want to be careful if the water is ebbing, meaning going out, the Strait of Juan de Fuca, you can actually have, and the wind is blowing against that, this area, if you were crossing from Port Townsend over to the San Juan Islands, could get pretty rough out there. And uh, you can see a summary down below of uh, what the conditions are going to be for the next uh, several days. And this is pretty accurate. People ask, what are these initials down at the bottom? ECMWF, GFS, Metro Blue, these are the different weather models. You know, hear that term used a lot, and what that really means is all of these predictions, and they are predictions, they are based on computer models, and the Europeans have their model, which happens to be very accurate. Uh, the US has theirs, and you get slightly different results between them. And you've probably seen this before when you're seeing the National Hurricane Center put up uh, uh, a map of where landfall is going to be for a hurricane. And they'll say, well, the European model shows it's going to hit Louisiana. Or they'll say the uh, US model shows it's going to hit here. And there's some competition amongst the, uh, the weather geeks about which models are the best and, and how they work. Uh, but you can play with that on Windy and see the different results. But what you can also see is you can see the wind predictions, they're color coded. They go from blue to green and when they go to orange, beware. That, that's when you start to get winds up in the 30 knots and, and I don't wanna be out in, in 30 knot winds. Now, I indicated that I wanted the weather for Anacortes, so that's the prediction for Anacortes, showing me my sunny days, some rain coming in next Monday, uh, forecast quite a ways out. And right now it's telling me in uh, Anacortes, the wind is out of the southeast at four knots. So, uh, you know, my departure out the Guimas Channel uh, would be, uh, would be uh, okay at four knots. And uh, you can drop these flags all over the place and literally okay. anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. But we use this all the time go up and going up and down the inside passage. Now, I will give you the one warning. I kind of mentioned it too. Uh, a few moments ago, they, these are weather predictions. They are computerized forecasts. And I've had situations where we've been sitting up in Port McNeil waiting to cross and uh, the, the, weather, the computerized weather models said, nope, don't do it. And uh, we looked at other indicators, lighthouse reports and buoy reports and found out that it wasn't that bad. So you like many things, you wanna work with multiple sources for your weather information to determine uh, what the real weather is out there. And uh, we uh, explain this also in the Wagner Guide uh, where you can go to, for example, uh, uh, the weather uh, buoy reports and see what the actual conditions are 
uh, and uh, at Smith Island, which is out in the middle of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Uh, or if you go up, if you're going across Georgia Strait, let's say from Nanaimo over to uh, uh, Pender Harbor, uh, you may want to take a look at Halibut Bank buoy. And the Halibut Bank buoy also gives you, in addition to the wind, the wave height and the interval. And that's really good to know as to what that, and, and I use that for my, <coughs> excuse me, go or no go all the time. So people ask when I give our weather courses, okay, Mark, what's your, what's your, uh, what do you to tolerate? Well, if I see waves that are uh, one foot, two foot, three foot, uh, after three foot, I start to watch. And then I watch for the interval. And if it's six seconds or less, to me, it's gonna be a little bit choppy. And uh, I'll know that ahead of time. If it's over six seconds and I get up to eight seconds, 10 seconds, heaven at 16 seconds, then very probably it's telling me it's a rolling swell. And I'm perfectly fine with rolling swells. And I'll even take waves up to, uh, 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 reported up to six feet or eight feet if it has an interval of 14, 15, 16, 18 seconds, because that to me is a big roller and I'll just ride that roller. But uh, I'll at least know what to expect. And uh, uh, so you've got so much of this information available. Now I'm showing you these things you can pull up on your computer. Hey, you Mark, I've got a question. Um, sure. So you don't go out for 30 knots. What's the line of demarcation that gives you pause and you know you start give, questioning your trip? Well, 15 to 20 knots. After 20 knots, I really start questioning. Uh -huh. And uh, some people would even say they're not comfortable at 20. Leonard, Lorena, what's your, uh, what's your area where you see the danger zone? Well, it, the danger versus fun. We uh, quite a while we we've, we've been caught in some stuff that we didn't want to be in, and so we just a long time ago declared if it's not going to be fun, we don't want to do it. And so uh, we're somewhere in the fifteen to twenty-five to be comfortable, uh, but uh, we can, we can handle stuff that's uh, easily up into thirty and you know, thirty-five, but it's not fun. So I was going to say your boat can handle it, but uh, it's <laughs> it's not fun. Good point. It's yeah. mainly the intervals. I think that's the most important. How far apart are those those waves or the, the well? The, oh, I'm sorry. The interval and also uh, the direction of it, and uh, against my direction of travel. So, uh, which way are we traveling versus which way is the uh, is the wind blowing and which way is the sea coming? Uh, we are ours for us. It's uh, it's not just the, a beam, but it's really quartering astern is actually the stuff that's just is not un not comfortable. Anything off the bow though is just fine. Our bow is a, a eight and a half, nine feet high. And so we can bust through a lot of good stuff. And you've had to do that when you worked across the uh, Gulf of Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was one. I'm laughing because we were, we got about out part way out there and uh, winds picked up and seas picked up. And so we, and it was coming off the nose out of the Northwest. And we turned around and uh, with the following seas, uh, I declared, I said, oh, it's not that bad. Let's turn around and try it again. So we did that for about 10 minutes and then said, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, and I think the lesson to that is sometimes when it's on the, on the edge, you have to stick your nose out, we say it, and try it. But again, a go, no go decision. And uh, I had it happen a couple uh, last year. I was coming down from Seattle and the, the, uh, the forecast and the conditions were on the edge. And I got three hours south of Ketchikan and I was bashing into it. And I just said, this is, this is not fun. Uh, I, I'm gonna turn around and go back to Ketchikan. There's a pub with a beer with my name on it, uh, Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna wait for another day when it feels more comfortable. So there's nothing wrong with continuing that go, no go and working your way out and uh, 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 deciding, uh, uh, you know, it isn't fun, let's not do it. And, and that particular time I was by single handing by myself 
but I'm also much more conscious when I have passengers with me. Uh, when they start turning green, it's time to come up with plan B. And uh, uh, one of the things that Leonard and I were talking about today on the phone was just so often when we're boating, it makes sense for us to have plan A, plan B, and sometimes even plan C and D. And uh, Leonard was talking about it from last weekend when they were out and finding anchorage in some of these places where that if they had a, a backup anchorage denoted if they got in and it was uh, too crowded. Yeah, indeed, when we were, uh, it was Sunday over the weekend and uh, our plan A was to head to Rosario, see if they had a, an empty buoy there or if they had space on the dock. Uh, plan B was to head up to East Sound and anchor out and dinghy into, into East Sound. Uh, but if the wind was not favorable, then uh, plan C was to head down towards uh, Spencer Spit, go on either side of that and anchor out. And then uh, if that didn't work out, if it was too full there, then there was plan B, which was head over towards, uh, towards uh, James Island. And there's a, I can never remember the name, the, there's a bay just to the northwest of that big bay that's got plenty of space. Uh, so indeed it was. And that's part of the flexible plans is to make sure you got some ideas of where you're going to go if this doesn't work. So. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, I was crossing from uh, Port Townsend and uh, planning to go to Fisherman's Bay on Lopez Island. And the most direct route is to cross and go through a, a place called Cattle Pass uh, between Lopez Island and San Juan Island. And Cattle Pass is known for some notorious uh, currents there because you've got several water coming from several directions and it can get pretty rough. And we had had a rough passage already crossing, uh, the, crossing the strait, strait of Juan de Fuca. We expected it and it was because the wind was on the beam and uh, 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 we had an ebbing tide and uh, the wind going against that ebbing tide. And I looked ahead at Cattle Pass and I said, you know what? I can only imagine that's gonna be worse today. So I made a right-hand turn and made the decision to take the long way around Lopez Island to get to Fisherman's Bay. And as soon as I got over in the lee of, of uh, Lopez Island, it was almost flat calm. There was about a two inch chop. I'll take a two inch chop. Uh, that was just fine. So though, that was my plan B. Uh, it was a much smoother ride. It took us an extra hour. And so what? Uh, you know, I, I was out there to have fun and enjoy my boating and not bash it and uh, watch my partner turn green, looking at me saying, why did you take this route? Don't you know better? So uh, consider having a plan A, B, and C. Uh, in, in consider also, take a look at our weather checklist and uh, 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 pulling that together will give you all of your information in a snapshot and yep. just be looking at it and updating it as you go and uh, uh, use your buoy reports, lighthouse reports, which are practically live rather than the forecast. And uh, you'll, your, your crew will thank you for it. Uh, well, yeah, it gets back to the goals of the trip. Is it to make your crew sick or is it to have fun? And I... <laughs> I think we know the answer there. Hey, Mark, we've got a few minutes left before uh, we wind down here. Uh, what else did you want to share? Uh, I, we've talked about our, our uh, show next week. is we about did, five yep. I, I wanted to have you, uh, well, we did have one question about the, uh, the Lake Bay Marina project. I talked with Bob Weiss today of oh, good. Arbaugh fame, and uh, he wanted me to share that the naming rights are still available, Mark. Uh, for five hundred thousand dollars, it could be called the Wagoner Cruising Guide. Uh, dot com, ah. Marina. Um, hundred thousand. Uh, he, he's they're well on their way though. They've got a lot of momentum, so that was really exciting. Um, I'll share Steve Finney's uh, email address in the chat box. It's, it's not too late to make that donation for that legacy for uh, boating in the future. So that's exciting. And I know, Mark, you've been tracking the w virtual wooden boat festival. What's going on there? Uh, as many of you know, the the Port Townsend. Uh, Wooden Boat Festival and the Maritime Center had to cancel the Wooden Boat Festival this year, which normally would be this coming weekend. So they have a virtual boat show. And I have to tell you, go to the website, take a look at it. 
uh, they've done a super job of lining up speakers, lining up tours of boat shops, uh, lining up people sharing their experiences of the race to Alaska. And uh, it really, uh, it, it's well curated. It, it, it looks very entertaining. Uh, the, the money goes to a good cause in terms of the Maritime Center. I think the tickets are, are $30, uh, but go to uh, uh, woodenboatfestival.com and you'll see the information there and just a full rundown of things. Uh, I'm even giving a virtual presentation there on, on what to do when the captain drops dead. So uh, that always gets, an, it gets a big crowd. Anyway, yeah, uh, but that, I hope you bring that's, those... what we, that's what we have coming up. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I was going to put a plug in. If you're, we're doing some online learning here, Mark. Remote learning, uh, no longer an oxymoron. I was going to put a plug in. If you're looking to keep your kids or grandkids engaged, this is a fun magazine called The Week. It's a weekly uh, magazine of articles of topical events for kids. And then CNN is doing a neat thing every morning. They have a CNN 10 where they are uh, updating uh, the news for kids. So we've been starting our mornings with that every day here at the Schrapp and Hallman household. I've got a uh, fourth grader and a seventh grader and uh, yeah, make it a, making a go of it as they say. That's, that's a lot of fun. And those kids have been voting several times this well, you've summer. Seen it, you've seen it in the flesh. Uh, I've I got know. a question for you, Mark. Well, you said food earlier. How do you like to cook bacon, Mark? Ooh, boy, is that a good question? <laughs> um, I, uh, I prefer it in a cast iron pan. Uh-huh. Uh, when I'm in a rush, I'll, I'll do the uh, microwave and paper towels to catch the splatter. Uh -huh. But I always find it ends up tasting like the paper towel. Ah. So uh, yeah. the cast iron with a, with a little splatter uh, shield. And uh, I'm a purist. I keep cast iron both on my boat and at home. Uh, the challenge I have on the boat is I don't have a good exhaust fan. Sure. So, uh, everybody all... in the marina knows that I've, uh, who, or who steps yeah. aboard by boat, knows that I had bacon that morning. Worst, uh, worst smells, uh, worst things to be known by. What about you, Landon? How do you thing, like to yeah. cook bacon? Yeah. And that, that I was going to add a vote for that too. It's a cast iron, and it's not, it's not so much the cooking, it's more about the odor. So yes. getting the yeah. smell, <laughs> you have to have the smell of bacon, and you have to just, yeah, the neighbors too. You have to get the neighboring boat, everybody else, you know, then everybody else has to have bacon too. I, I actually, I, I, I almost, it a... it's funny you bring it up because I almost got really indulgent this morning and I ran out of time. I, I was having my, uh, everything bagel with cream cheese. And I said, boy, two pieces of nice Hempler's bacon on top of that would be just <laughs> excellent. I'll probably do it tomorrow morning now that I, you know, I could taste the cream cheese and the seeds and, and the bagel and bacon. That's a true everything bagel. I've got a different technique I wanted to share. I actually got a prop here. I like to put the bacon on one of these uh, grills here, you know, for the cookies, yeah. you know, and then I like to bake it in the oven with aluminum foil. So I get the cookie pan out. Nice. And then I, I put the bacon up here so it doesn't need to sit in the fat and I align it with aluminum foil and it's not too shabby of a way to clean up the, the kitchen either. Before you know it, everything is back to normal. Right? I think it's up to my standards. And uh, you save your bacon grease. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, that's actually the gold, right? That's yeah. what it's all about. Uh, well, cool. Well, uh, that's all I've got. We've got episode 17 here. Uh, Saturday Night Live's host was, God, I'm out of the loop here. Ron Ness Nesson. Ron Nesson. Do you know that name? Does that no. sound familiar? Yeah. No. The musical guest, Patty Smith. That I know. I know yes. Patty Smith. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So there you go. We've got a big episode uh, next week. Remind us, Mark, what's on tap? Tides and Currents with Kevin Monaghan, the uh, editor of uh, Ports and Passes and a Coast Guard captain. He'll tell a few stories, uh, and uh, Kevin, Kevin's great with his stories. Uh, a little tidbit, and I'll challenge him with this. He, once for the Canadian Coast Guard, guarded the Alaska border, and uh, he would meet his counterpart with the U.S. Coast Guard. They could not step on each other's ship because the ships are sovereign territories, oh. and they'd have to go through customs if they were going to actually step on each other's ship. So one or the other would get in their dinghy, which were pretty good sized dinghies, and go over and side tie and have a cup of coffee and discuss uh, cross-border uh, politics. So Kevin can talk about that because for years the Canadians swore the American fishermen in Alaska were 
stealing their fish before mm. they got to the Fraser River. I'm looking forward to meeting him. It's not too late to get those Lake Bay Marina donations in. And with the Lake Bay don donation at a certain level comes a Wagoner cruising guide, I think. Right, Mark? That's correct. For the first 50, I don't know where we are, and I'll report on that uh, okay. next week. And somebody asked, uh, Denny asked uh, when we're going to start distributing those. That We will distribute those when the new Wagner guide comes out. And uh, Lorena is working really hard to get it done. But that'll be uh, uh, the beginning of December. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's such a fun, uh, fun show tonight. It's great to see you all. Thanks for tuning in at home, and we will see you again next Thursday. Yes. Thank you, and thank you to the Grosbeck uh, Realty Group. Amen. Good night, Good night everybody. You.